You are watching a clip from the John Perry channel, Genetics and Evolution. The, our, our femora, like the, the top of the femur where it hits or inserts into the hip, it mm. has all these struts that are optimized for our type of walking and mm. it distributes the, the pressure well from, you know, hitting into the hip and also back into the femur. So, you know, so you don't snap off your uh, femoral head, which is a really bad injury. Yeah. So it's, it's a, yeah. So it's a good way to distribute that. So we have all these struts too, and they've shown that, yeah, okay. The struts in runners look different than the struts in you know, your average Joe that just maybe walks to work. Yeah. Um, so we look different on the inside, depending on what we're doing. And those definitely remodel <laughs> over our lifetime. So that's so neat. When, when we're studying paleontology, how much can an animal's activity during its life change its skeleton? This is a question of phenotypic plasticity. So you said that using your muscles changes your skeleton. Weightlifters have slightly different skeletons than non-weightlifters. We know that in chimpanzees and in gorillas, the change can be extreme, like in the skull. When male gorillas go through puberty, they grow this giant crest on the top of their head, and that crest is not coded for directly in their genes. That crest is a result of genes that allow bone to grow when muscles tug on that thin little bit of tissue that's on the outside of a bone. So I guess you could say that the genes are coding for that crest, but not directly. How much phenotypic plasticity could there be in an animal's skeleton as a result of genes that do this sort of thing? I mean, is it possible for us to think that we're looking at two different species when actually we're just looking at the same species that lived in very different conditions? So it changed throughout its lifetime. That's, that's a really good question. It's almost like a nature versus nurture situation, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think of it kind of like we have a set stencil. We have a set structure. We have a set plan. There is a certain amount of wiggle room in certain directions, but it's not so crazy that you really, if you know the biology of the animal well, it's, it's quite hard to, to really think that one species is, is different from another. That being said, with paleontology, a lot of the times we don't know the biology that right. well, right? Sometimes <laughs> yeah. we only have one specimen of this one animal and two, three, four, five years later, we find another specimen that looks similar, but not quite. And, and it's difficult. It's very difficult to realize, to, to, you know, where, where do you set the line? Where, yeah. how, how much difference equals a different species versus not? And, and in reality, in some ways, we're probably overestimating species because we don't know um, ontogeny. We don't know their growth series very well. Right. And in other ways, we're probably underestimating um, diversity of species because if you look at like modern anoles and lizards, a lot of them are completely different species. You know, their outside is different. Their behavior is different. They live in different mm -hmm. niches, especially I like the example of anoles because in one tree, you have the branch anoles, you have the ones that live near the trunk, you have the ones that live at the canopy and they're making all these different niches across one tree. They all look different. They all behave differently, but their skulls are so similar. Yeah. so similar and so, that's even but, with, but they're different species like we know they're different species we know they're different species because we have genetics and we have the external mm. looks and the behavior and all these other factors that you don't get with fossils yeah right and also when you look at their so when you look at their skeletons they're they're very similar but we also have a full skeleton for them now cut that skeleton into maybe less than 20 percent of it put it in a rock tumbler and tell me if you can still <laughs> figure out if it's a different species or not. Right. That's the challenge that paleontologists have. Right. So. Uh, that's good. <laughs> well, that's it for this clip, but don't worry. I post clips regularly and every Thursday I post completely fresh content. Make sure you're subscribed. Liking and commenting is also welcome.